There was one young man who had some amazing feedback and I just thought, okay, we can't give you half an hour, but come up here for five minutes and just show the world what you're made of. So without further ado, a shortened version of notes from a small cyclist, Thomas <laughs> me to share the big stage and to everyone for making me so welcome. I'm Thomas Alva Jones, I'm eight and I love riding my bike and going on adventures. Oh and this is King Louie, my bike. Bicycle touring is my favourite way to see the world. It's taken me from the laps of the band to stand behind our house to places and people I would never have encountered otherwise. Along the way I've learned about map reading, the Scottish, the Scottish independence referendum. <laughs> they just said no. <laughs> I've learned about other languages, food and all sorts of cool stuff. Now I've started a project to climb and cycle between the three peaks, the highest mountains in Wales, England and Scotland respectively. In between other unavoidable stuff like going to like having to go to school. <laughs> but I'm going to share with you how I am learning to find ways for a little person to have big adventures even when other stuff gets in the way. I'm talking about making the adventure mindset part of every day, making your big plans fit your life and turning your dreams into real life adventures to be proud of. Now I could talk for ages about my bike, the kit I use, stuff like that. We can do that later if you like. <laughs> but the most important piece of adventure gear I have is, drum roll please, My drive out map of the country. <laughs> now this normally lives on our breakfast room wall. <laughs> you don't even have to do all of your adventures, just the process gets you thinking about it. Now, in fairness, some of the ideas you come up with will be better than others. <laughs> I did have a plan to swim part of a lap around the English coast, but Sean's done that now, and I think that was mad. <laughs> you won't catch me eating dog food. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Although you might want to get a world map if you're ambitious. The point is, adventure is always out there waiting for us. The map is always on the wall, daring us to come up with another cool idea. What a great way to start an otherwise uninspiring day. <laughs> I just love being able to let my imagination go crazy and in amongst some of the really bonkers ideas which are often a lot of fun to imagine I come up with something that I would really like to actually do. So one day I'd, I had been watching Mark Belmont's The Man Who Cycled the Americas and, and talking about it with Daddy. 
we started drawing an actual, we could really do this kind of epic adventure. In 2014 and 15, I was able to do a long distance cycling journey with my family. But cut a long story short, we've not been able to do that this year. It's been a very challenging year for me and our whole family. I decided on another challenge based on a linear, linear route from the Lamberis Pass to Fort William and I really wanted to see it through. So the idea of doing an adventure in small chunks was born. After all, you can do little adventures in the, in the evenings and at weekends maybe you can string some of those together. We went back to the plan for my challenge and worked out where all the railway stations were on, the, on my route. We broke the trip up into legs of a manageable length that I could cross off as and when the opportunity came my way. As it happens, I ended up doing the second climb first and speaking at the Cycling Touring Festival in Clitheroe. So, we nipped over to the Lake Dis District and I climbed stuff on a park in fabulous weather. <laughs> a local in the Lake District suggested I try my first proper scramble ever up the Micklendor Gully. That was definitely time to fun. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be so loose. <laughs> Snowden didn't quite go to plan. The weather pulled in and it took four attempts over the course of three days before I made it to the summit safely. I lost a lot of miles along the road while sat in the car park at Penna Pass watching the rain. But we decided to persevere with getting the climb done while we were in the area and before winds put pay to our chances. I didn't have to do anything quite so scary on Snowden, so I did have to climb into the clouds on a day when lots of people didn't make the summit. It was a bit odd finding a cafe and a toilet block at the top. <laughs> the next day I set off from the car park one last time on my bike at last. Cycling trip so far has been awesome. Dropping from the mountains to the drafty North Wales coast. I've seen Britain's smallest house and ridden past Conway Castle before whizzing along the past alongside the A55. On future legs, I'm, I'm looking forward to the ferry crossing the Mersey. Climbing into the Lake District to return to Wasdale Head. And hopefully I might bump into my inspiration Mark Beaumont in Scotland. Hopefully by the end of next summer I will have completed all of the legs of the challenge, even if not quite in order. Building a big adventure to fit in limited time is like moving a desert. You have to do it to one grain of sand at a time. By the by the time I have finished, all of those shorter route things will have built into a much bigger achievement. So by making your adventure plans part of your everyday life, you can keep yourself motivated and inspired to achieve things big. I'm learning to make my own videos and document to document my Santa Clan GB adventure and sharing them on social media. People like Dave and Sean and Mark Beaumont sharing their great adventures in a big way helped inspire me to get started. But, but every adventure has a story to tell and something to share which can inspire other people to get out there and take that first step on their own journey. Never mind other people recording your experiences 
may well inspire you too. The famous fellow walker and author Alfred Wainwright said, speaking about his books, I was working for my own pleasure, gathering together all my notes and drawing a host of recollections and putting them in a book so that when I became an old man, I could look at them in leisure, recall all my memories and go on fellow walking in spirit after my long legs had given up. So get yourself a map on the wall and stick it somewhere where it's going to challenge you every day. Bedroom, fridge, back of the toilet door, <laughs> wherever. Just find somewhere and get doodling those ideas. Do whatever it is that motivates you to think adventurously and keep the ideas flowing. Even when you have to do other things in life. So I the scenic route to school. Turn up at work on a scooter. Skateboard to the shop like Dave did before he crossed Australia. <laughs> Find ways to make daily life fun and to have tiny adventures that will inspire you to dream big. And just because you might not have had time, have time to just ship out and hit the road for months, it doesn't mean you can't achieve something greater in the sum of its parts. Aim high, break an idea up, and treat it as a project. If you'd like to find out more about my adventures, I'm on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> at Thomas underscore Ivor. It's been, it's been a privilege to talk to you. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very much indeed for coming and listening. Say yes more. very much indeed. I tell you what, much like Amy and Ella last night, we're all looking at you and thinking, oh, I wish we'd started like that 30 years ago. You're a compliment to your parents, young man. Good work. <laughs>